It occurred to me a little while after posting the last video on calculating the implied volatility of an option in, option in Python that I've written all these blog posts and I'm now doing these videos for an audience uh, who has some background in programming. And a lot of my uh, friends who trade, uh, trade options and whatnot, even a lot of our engineers at work prefer to use uh, tools like uh, Excel or some sort of spreadsheet rather than actual programming. So I'm going to redo the calculation portion in a spreadsheet. I'm not going to repeat the actual uh, theoretical background. Uh, I did that in a previous video, and watching a guy type into a spreadsheet for 10 minutes or so is not terribly entertaining uh, as it is, so I don't want to make this video longer than necessary by uh, redoing the, the theory section. So I'm going to do this in Google Sheets, and the formulas are the same in Excel, so you could just uh, repeat the whole thing in Excel, and the results should be identical. Let's first make this bigger so it's a little more visible to everybody. Um, and give it a name. Let's give it the ever original name find vow just in case I need to come back to this at some later time. Uh, the variables we're going to need are the stock price <coughs> which is S, strike price which is K, days till expiration uh, needs to be in years, risk-free rate uh, and as a uh, annual percentage. What else are we going to need here? Uh, and the original price of the call. So we're going to call that C0. We're also going to need to calculate uh, the derivative of the call price with respect to volatility, which is Vega. We're going to need our uh, parameters D1, D2. We're going to need the call price from the Black-Scholes model. I'm going to call it call price BS for Black-Scholes. And that's probably enough to get started here. So, in this example, let's use the um, stuff for the Apple, Apple um, implied volatility, which is here. So at that particular time, the stock was 194.11. So let's go 194.11. The strike price was 210? Two, 210. Days until expiration, 38 days. So this needs to be in years, so it's going to be equal to 38 divided by 365. Let me just make sure I type that right, because I have a tendency to screw these up. Good. Risk-free rate was 0. Uh, I took it to be 1%, and the call price was $1.50, 1.5. So, let's uh, start to fill in these things here uh, using the formula formulas in the code. On second thought, we're going to need to uh, calculate D1 and D2 first, and then, then we can calculate Vega. So, let's go here. Uh, now let's go back to the original code. Let's go back to the functions for D1 and D2. So here's our formula. So it starts off, D1 is 1 over sigma times the square root of days till expiration. So let's just do that. 1 divided by sigma, which is the implied volatility. Oh, we're also going to need a column for vol. So let's stop this. Let's insert a column for implied volatility. Insert a column to the left. This would be vol, and this is our initial guess of the volatility, so I took it to be 0 0.5, 50%, so you need an initial guess to start the algorithm going. So this is 1 over, sigma is F2, the implied volatility, and I need to multiply it times the square root of the days until expiration, so DTE, and now that's that. Go back here. Now it's all times this. So it's times the natural log. Uh, remember in Python log is natural log. So times <coughs> open parentheses natural log stock price is uh, A2 divided by the strike price plus this term, r plus sigma squared over 2. So, plus the risk-free rate is d2 plus 
Sigma squared is the volatility again, so we find our vol, where is it? It's in column E2, so I'll just type that in, E2 squared, and that's divided by 2, and I need to multiply that times the days till expiration, so times uh, days until expiration is C2, close parenthesis. I probably um, screwed something up here, let's see. Yeah, it looks right. You know, what we can do is actually run that Python code in a bit and uh, test out to see if these numbers agree with the code. Because I find it a lot harder to look at this and edit that than, uh, than Python code. But in the meantime, let's do D2 and we'll, uh, we'll go to the Python afterwards. So that's just D1. So it's equal to D1 and it's minus sigma times the square root of 2. So sigma is our volatility. Did I say square root of 2? I meant square root SQRT of the days until expiration. So days till expiration. There we go. I found a couple of typos here. First of all, this is, should be the implied volatility, which is the column F2. Uh, the other issue here is I have an ampersand where I should have a uh, caret. So let me delete that and put a caret. Um, so that formula is correct, but this number is not correct uh, because this should be 194.11. See what I mean by my typos? 194.11. Now those numbers look good. So now we can start updating these other parameters. So let's go to Vega. Vega, Vega, where are you, Vega? There you are. Bring this up. Vega down here is actually part of my while loop. Vega, I don't see you. Where are you, Vega? Here you are. So, let's just write it this way. S times the square root of time. So the stock price times the square root of time. That's equal to A1 times SQRT of days until expiration, which is that. And now we're going to need to multiply it times the normal distribution um, times the uh, density function of D1. So, um, in the spreadsheet, in both Google Sheets and Excel, I believe that it's just called norm dist, and it's equal to the, uh, the first argument is the thing we need, so that's going to be D1, and then you're going to need to actually give it the, the uh, mean and standard deviation of the distribution, which for the normal is 0 and um, 1, respectively, and then we're going to... Uh, have to give it a variable false, which is the um, to, to use the cumulative or density function. So false means use the density function rather than cumulative. So it's giving me a value. Why is it giving me a value? Uh, a1 times the square root of oh, it's a2. It's a2 and uh, c2. A2 and C2. So there we go. There's Vega. So now we need the Black Scholes call price. So let's go back to our terminal window here and find the function for the call price. Here it is. So it's a little bit complicated. Uh, anyone want to take a bet on how badly I screw this up? So the first term is the uh, cumulative distribution function of D1. So let's go back here. Now this is the cumulative rather than the density function, so we don't need to, so we need to, uh, instead of having that last argument be false, this needs to be true. So, it's norm dist. D1 is here. Zero mean, one standard deviation, and this is now true for the cumulative. Let's just make sure that actually computes a number. Good, it does. So we need to go here now. Now it's times, uh, where am I? Here we are. Times the stock price. So times A2. And minus the norm of D2. So here we're going to do norm dist again. D2 is h2 zero mean one standard deviation this is true again
and then we need uh, what do we need we need the strike price which is B2 times B2 times EXP minus the risk-free rate which is uh, where is the risk-free rate that's just moving my cursor around so let me just do that it's gonna give an error for the time being risk-free rate is D2 go back here D2 and I believe if I remember correctly it was times the time which I think was C um, C2 so let's do that uh, make sure my things are correct days until expiration is C2 and I believe we have it there we go there's the call price now the last thing we need to do is update our volatility so we're gonna make a column we'll just call it new vol now we go back to our uh, formulas down here it's part of the while loop so I did this in a couple of steps. I calculated this, what I call the function value, which is the Black-Scholes call price minus the actual call price. So I'll just do all this together in um, one step. So uh, it's minus the quantity. So this is equal to minus the quantity of the Black-Scholes call price minus the actual call price. I believe it was divided by Vega. I'll go back and check this. So there's Vega. And now I need to add the original volatility and if I remember the formula correctly. So let's see. Uh, did I do that right? Where am I here? Function value divided by Vega plus Val. Yeah, that's good. So now we have an updated volatility. So we've gone from 50% to 27%. Go away. And we are ready to go. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to set, come on, where's my cursor? There we are. This column, the next uh, iteration of this sheet is going to be that. So there we go. And I'm just going to kind of be lazy here. And what I'm going to do instead of, um, what I'm going to do is just copy these down a few lines just so that we can use them again. So that's we're good to go here. We should be able to just copy these, drag this down, yep, drag that down, and there we go. So that's it. Um, this is the implied volatility. We just keep iterating until it comes to converges to some um, within some tolerance that we like. And this is basically the same number that we had got out of the uh, Python spreadsheet. So it's a pretty simple thing, uh, all things considered. You could just do it quickly in Excel. And uh, there we are.